Jesus. They kept looking down over, over there, pointing at me, saying, Jesus Christ, get your hair cut. Jesus Christ, would you take a bath? Anyways, so I ended up leaving Clearwater Beach. And, well, actually, I got escorted off Clearwater Beach. They had to call in a parking lot enforcement officer for backup. And he dropped me down there off in front of the Fort Harrison Hotel. And I got the hell out of there. I wasn't going to stick around there for very long. And I headed up to Sun Eden, Florida. That Sun Eden like the Eden, only a little bit hotter. Because this was August. And I found me some more waterfront property right underneath Stevenson Creek Bridge. And it wasn't too bad except at low tide. And sometimes at high tide it smelled a little bit. Because uh, the wastewater treatment plant had some overflow or something going on there. And, and it just, you know, it kind of smelled like, you know, well, you know. Anyways, it, it would burn the back of my throat. I'd wake up in the morning with a, you know, like a burning in my throat, but I made it out of there alive, but it was, it was okay. It wasn't quite as hoity-toity as Clearwater Beach, but I woke up one morning after a good day's sleep. I mean, one afternoon after a good day's sleep about sunset, and my mouth was like brine. And I needed something to drink, so I thought I'd take a little walk down the Pinellas Trail to get me something to drink. And so I started walking down, I figured there got to be a water fountain somewhere. So I started walking down the Pinellas Trail. With my head hung low. Because I was feeling sorry for myself, I was in the doghouse worse than I'd ever been. And after walking a little ways on the Pinellas Trail, I thought I could hear something up ahead on the trail. Oh, I say it sounded like it was less than a half a mile away from me, but more than a quarter of a mile away from me. Yes, sir. And I stopped and I had a look-see. Sure enough, I looked up ahead on the trail, and less than a half a mile away from me, but more than a quarter of a mile away from me, was a pack of 15 dogs, Steve. 15 of them. And four people walking them. And these were designer dogs. There wasn't one dog in the bunch that looked exactly alike. That's how I knew they were designer dogs. Designer dogs. And I didn't think too much about it, and it didn't really make me feel much better than I was already feeling, or worse than I was already feeling. So I just started walking again with my head hung low because I was in the doghouse worse than I've ever been feeling sorry for myself. And after walking down the Pinellas Trail a little farther with my head hung low, I thought I could hear something now pretty good. I'd say it was less than a football field away from me now, but more than a half a football field away from me. So I stopped and I had another look see it just like I thought I heard. Less than a football field away from me, but more than a half was in 15 dogs. And these weren't no one of the mill swamp any feral cat eating coyotes neither. Yes, they were designer dogs just like I said. And they was all licking each other's faces. And for a brief moment, I thought there might be hope for a guy like me. And then they started sniffing each other again. But I thought there might be a little, I might get a bath or something. I didn't know out of the deal. But anyways, I started walking at them dogs. But I wasn't hanging my head low anymore because there was something about them dogs and them people I wanted. And then dogs got one with them, one look at me on the Pinellas Trail and they come running up to me, dragging them 15 people behind them. And right there on the Pinellas Trail, ladies and gentlemen, so help me God, I got right down on my knees. And all them dogs, they started licking my face. This side of my face and that side of my face. They was licking it, licking it, licking it. And just like that guy right there. Take a good look at him. I was in need of a good face looking. And then all of a sudden, them dogs, they started sniffing everyone. But I started to feel pretty good, and I thought life might be worth living again. And then this guy named KK walks up to me with two leashes, two dogs on leashes, and he says, my name is KK, and I'm with the Dog Eating Doggy Rescue. And if you walk these two dogs, mister, it'll make you feel better. So I got nothing to lose. Um, sleeping under Stevenson Creek Bridge, right there near Sun Eden, like Dunedin. And it was hot. So I walked your two dogs, mister. So I started walking these two dogs down the end of this trail. And I started to feel just a little bit better. And thought life might be worth living again. After walking a little ways down the Pinellas Trail, the 
these two dogs as girlfriend Kathy He says, wait a minute, mister. If you want these two dogs too, it'll make... I said, wait a minute. I'm already walking two dogs and you want me to walk two more and I was just going to get me something to drink, ma'am. I was just going to get me something to drink. And you know what that woman did? She went over to a, a, one of them, you know, the soft-sided coolers that was hanging around an airplane dog's neck. This soft-sided cooler, this airplane, you know what an airplane dog is, don't you? Anybody know what an airplane dog is? Mother was an Airedale and father was just a plain old dog. But anyways, she, she got a hold of that, she opened up that cooler and packed in ice in that cooler. Wasn't a 16 ounce or a 12 ounce or an 8 ounce bottle of Zephyr Hill Spring Water. It was a one liter bottle of Zephyr Hill Spring Water packed in ice in the bottom. And that woman pulled it out of that cooler for me, walked up to me, she cracked the lid open on that, and she poured it in a dog dish, and me and them dogs lapped that up, and I walked her two dogs too. And I started to feel a little bit better, and that night when I went to bed underneath the Stevenson Creek Bridge, I wrote this song.
sing a verse, the chorus. I'm gonna sing it line by line. I'm gonna sing the first line by myself. And then I'm gonna sing the second line. I mean the first line a second time, and then you're gonna sing the second time I sing it on and on, line by line by line by line. Now when I sing that first line a second time, please don't sing the second line where I normally sing the second line where the first line is going to be sang a second time. There's always one in the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for this? Let me get them set up here. 